Hi, I'm Naomi from the Rapid Transition Alliance. This film is all about how lockdown has shown us that we can take better care of each other, rebalancing our priorities and putting people before short-term economic interests. It's right at the heart of the urgent changes we need, not just to reverse inequality and raise well-being, but also to confront the climate emergency. The very positive news is we're actually good at making big, rapid changes when we understand that we need to. We asked you to send in your lessons from lockdown and this is what we discovered. People's behaviour can change overnight to help protect others. It's all so fragile, isn't it? That's what I've learned, I think. It's what it feels like anyway, that life was ticking along and it all seemed like nothing massive could ever change and huge change was impossible. And then it did change, didn't it, overnight? In ways that you couldn't comprehend and not only did how we treat other people change, but kind of what we thought about the rules of the game had just changed. Although in many ways the corona crisis has been very traumatic, it's also helped us to think differently about our politics, our economy and our society. For example, we've learned that the government can move incredibly fast when they need to and can find the money to pay for things. We need them to be doing that for the climate crisis with the same sort of urgency that they showed during this health crisis. Only well, only December were we being told that it was impossible to find that, that sort of money um, around about election time. Um, and then all of a sudden overnight, so much more was, was being found. And my job has been for years to make big change happen, or be part of making big change happen. And I admit, you know, I, I sometimes don't think it's possible. You sometimes think everything has to happen slowly, that only incremental change is possible. When you're looking at things like climate change and, you know, ending poverty and racial equality, these things feel like we don't have the time for slow incremental change. And then you can see an entire world change overnight. Working hours, places and practices can be adapted to meet new needs. Since 2007, I've been part of the CAT team who've been travelling across the UK from rural Mid Wales to deliver zero carbon written training courses to councils, active citizens, businesses and academics. People are more available basically uh, to have these sorts of in-depth conversations and that actually, despite the technology, it's actually quite personal. You know, you have an hour or an hour and a half with one person to really pick their brains on something. To have. I also thought I was going to work in an office this year. Turns out we can work from home just as well and save money and reduce public transport emissions in the process. Communities can come together to help look after each other. There was a, a big effort, really unsung, by the, by the um, government. One of the, one of the actually really good positive things that they did, which was housing all the rough sleepers in the country. I think at least 80 or 90% of rough sleepers were reached and at least temporarily housed. Um, and there was some concern that uh, that money and that housing would suddenly be pulled when the, in, in sort of August, September, when the, um, when the pandemic sort of eased a bit, but in fact it has actually continued on to March now. At the end of the day, the things that matter are the things that have come to the forefront in all of this, you know, the people who matter the most, those people who have kept the country going, and, and all you can do really is hope that that is fully taken on board. And we've learned that the people that really do valuable work, people like carers and people that work in the food industry, we have taken them for granted and we need to value them better. Getting lots of donations from the people in the community, other organisations. We're cooking food in big quantities and we're serving that out of the cafe. And then we have a network of cycle volunteers who are able to deliver food to people who are vulnerable in the community. Those people have been referred to us or have self-identified. Anyone could just say that they wanted a food parcel and we set them up with some regular deliveries and cycling volunteers pick the food up from the home beam and take it to them. In the village where I live, a sort of small local WhatsApp group that had originally been just for social gatherings quickly reorganised itself within a week or two of the lockdown starting. Within a very short time had about 100 people on board. They then self-organised to work together with the local shop, the doctor's surgery and other local service providers to make sure that vulnerable people in the village were contacted. The new normal is going to be things like this continuing. Um, there's obviously a need, so we need to find a way of making this continue once we're back at school. Um, 
and also looking at the, the mental well-being of children and families. I think we've been very careful and we're taking the measures that we can take, but I think my need for connection with other people throughout what's happening at the moment is greater than the fear. It is stressful. I mean, obviously we, we um, you know, this. Hard, hard going. <laughs> I've lost two cousins through COVID-19. Have you? I'm oh, sorry to hear that. No, no, it's fine. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Like, sorry. But I mean, um, this affects everyone. So it's not like a certain group of people that it's going to affect. It affects the rich, the poor, anybody. It doesn't matter where you're from, what accent you've got, what you wear on your head, what you don't wear. It doesn't matter. So um, yeah, it's affecting everyone. Thanks for watching this. If you agree that we need to put looking after each other better before short-term economic interests and want to join our rapid positive transformation of how we live, then why not click the button below and join our community? Together we can tackle the climate emergency and make life better for everyone.